speaker is getting ready to entertain some questions. May I just remind those uh, who wish to ask to please keep the question short and direct to the point because we would like to be able to hear from all nine campuses. We will entertain two questions here inside the auditorium. Please here, raise your hand and when I call on you, proceed to the nearest microphone, state your name, college and question. Do I see any hand? I think our audience is puzzled <laughs> by the questions posited by our speaker. So do we have a volunteer? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, who, who would like to go first? All right, microphone over there, please. Um, I just want to... Your name, ma'am? No, this is Dita Tan from the School of Economics. Uh, Mr. Sisip, you know, I think my fac our faculty has really tried to respond positively to what you were suggesting. Uh, we do research on policy issues. Now the most recent research we have done and we have publicized is the is the on the issue of population. Could you speak closer to the Yeah, it's on the issue of population. So we have really been doing this and I think we made some success when we wrote the white paper that's we think uh, toppled the helped topple the Marcos regime, you know, that was very well received. But academics do their research and policy prescriptions and so on. But we don't really go into advocacy. And so I just want to tell you that we do our part, I think, but we don't get a hearing. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I remember that there was a paper put out by your economics department under Mr. The there on the ZTE problem, and that answered all the questions, although the paper was, I think, just a two, three page paper. But that stopped all questions, and everyone agreed with him. You know? But I thought that on many burning issues, uh, UP is respected as an impartial, independent group, and your I think people respect your viewpoints probably much more than those from the Congress or from business organizations. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, do we have another question? One more question from the audience. Volunteers from up there? Uh, all right, yes, please. I'm Estrella Solidum, retired professor of political science, UP. My great problem about the country now is the cowardice of the people. The character is so uh, out of form already so that they will shut up or they will do something worse and that will affect everything that we are doing, including education, which is the most important thing, because the children will grow up one day to be the leaders in this country. So how can we uh, correct the cowardice, the lack of honesty of the people today? Thank you very much. Could I answer the question in a rather indirect way. Huh? I was with the Papa Nuncio, the new Papa Nuncio, the American from 
And I thought he would be more liberal in his attitude. And I don't know why I was seated next to him. And I asked him as to, I'd never met him before, that was my first evening with him. But I say, category A, B, C, D, E, economic grouping. You are aware that A has less children than E. He said, yes, that's correct. I said, do you think the rich Catholics are having less sex than the poor Catholics? Well, he said, well, I really don't know, but maybe that's the case, no? <laughs> but then I raised the question, and I asked him very frankly, I said, it happened that there was a half-page ad in the papers a few days before that by Bishop Reyes with the endorsement of a cardinal with a Polish name, saying that Gawad Kalingan, and I think UP has worked closely with Gawad Kalingan, should not accept contributions from pharmaceutical companies that manufacture condoms or contraceptives or pills. And I was quite surprised that with that, uh, of course, condoms I know are manufactured by rubber companies, not pharmaceutical companies. No. But then I asked the Papa Nunchu, I said, well, uh, is that the correct position of the church? He says, yes, he says. So I said, doesn't it mean that if a rich Catholic is taking contraceptives, he has the right to ask the church to return the money that he has given the church. And the Papa Nuncio thought it over. He said, well, you are logically, you are right, no? Now, my question is really this, that why are the upper income Catholic groups afraid to come out and take a position since, as far as I know, the only country that is still uh, so much politically and everything listening to the church is Malta or maybe Poland. You know? But the rest of the world feels that you, you can vote freely, you don't have to listen to the church. I mean, that's not the church role to be there. But here, I guess, uh, so I asked the indirect question as to why are the upper income groups afraid to come out, even on the questions of the church? You know? I sometimes can see the question facing the big businessmen, and that doesn't mean upper income group. There are many rich people that are not in business at all, that they are in professions and so on. If you are in any large business group here, you have to think of the consequences. If you criticize government policy, if they regulate your water rates, if they regulate certain licenses that you get, and these are not released, then you may have to dismiss so many of your employees. So you have to think twice about this, no? But uh, I think your question is very valid as to should there not be, although you, you might say this, that the press here is still very free. No? And if you read the columns of the Inquirer or the Star in sometimes, or some of the commentators of the uh, radio, I mean TV networks, they speak quite freely. You know? But I think uh, you're right that the citizens as a whole, maybe they're tired of the demonstrations and so on. But that part, I can't quite answer you directly. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sisip. I hear that uh, UP Tacloban is now ready. 
with their question. The pro moderator is Professor Ami Joan Exconde. Please come in. Good afternoon, Dr. Sisip. First of all, we would like to thank you for the SGV group for its noble cause of granting UPV Tacloban College 30 scholarship slots for our BS accountancy students. Oh. We also would like to inform you that the 1993 CPA board exam top notcher in the person of Ms. Josephine Adrienne Abarca and who is now a senior partner of SGV Group is an alumna of our college. With me now is Professor Kagara for his question. Okay, uh, magandang hapon po, Dr. C. Sipser. My question goes like this. If you were president of UP, which one or two questions you raised in your speech would you give utmost priority to enable UP to take the lead in getting the Philippines out of the mess it is in right now. Thank you, Bob. My first uh, choice, as, as I see the problems, the question of poverty, you know, that I see in a poor country, and this applies not only to the Philippines, but to all the Asian countries, where in the past 50, 45 years ago, I started putting up offices there. If you are a poor nation, and people are poor and hungry, and not educated, democracy does not work at all. And I've not seen a single country where democracy can give you fast growth. The key is first to have economic freedom. When you're no longer hungry, you don't sell the votes. When you're literate, your judgment is much better than someone who is illiterate and poor. So when you sell your votes, democracy does not work. It's a democracy of the people with the money to buy the votes. And I've seen this, I've gone through Latin America to see what are they doing on economic development. And my conclusion is really this, that until you solve the problem of poverty, you cannot solve the NPA problem or the Muslim problem. No? That the Muslims' education level or the data that I've seen of literacy rate is so far below the Christian rate. And the Christian rate is already scandalously, as I say, the number of dropouts in the first, second grade, resulting in about 10% of the population being illiterate. It cannot go on that way, no? The people have to be educated. And that you must have an education standard that is comparable between the rich and the poor so that the poor will have an opportunity to go up depending upon whether he has the range or not. So if you ask me where would I first pay my attention to, the first thing would be basic education. Yes, now we have UP Cebu ready with a question. The moderator is Professor Tiffany Tan. Please come in, UP Cebu. All right, may I just read to you the question? It uh, was sent to us via Skype. How can we motivate or inspire, to use your word, 